Hey guys, Ben from Men's Game Time here, and welcome back to more Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. Last time, we did the tutorial, and then we also took on Seto Kaiba in the first duel, won by Exodia, and I just kind of explained also where I was all summer. This time, we're going to be doing the uh, first duel inside the actual Duelist Kingdom tournament, titled The Ultimate Great Moth. And I apologize for not really reading the story for the last segment, I'll just... But since I got nothing to talk about now, I could just read it. So, after the win against Seto Kaiba, Yugi was puzzled to receive a package from Maximilian Palakasis, the creator of Duel Monsters. Inside the box was a videotape. Yugi inserted the tape into the VCR, and Pegasus' face popped up on the TV screen. Very 90s and early 2000s right there was VCRs, man. That, that kind of dates this, you know, this is like a while ago, man. Greetings, little Yugi. I am Maximilian Pegasus. I've heard some terribly interesting things about you. Your impressive defeat of Sefto Kaiba intrigued me so much that I've decided to investigate your amazing dueling skills personally. Right here and now, we shall hold a special duel. So yeah, uh, in this story mode, not all the uh, duels are present. Like, you're not going to do this duel. But, I mean, this one's understandable because you actually, like, you lose it. Spoilers. But, like, it's kind of a, also a weird duel that had, like, a time limit in it. So... Suddenly, strange and arcane magic froze time so that no one could move, except for Yugi. This dark dimension we're in is known as the Shadow Realm, a mystical place where incredible monsters can be summoned and the impossible is quite possible. Tell me, Yugi, do you believe there is magic in these cards? Don't you know? You invented this game. Good point. What if I told you I didn't? Huh? In ancient times, the Egyptians called this the Shadow Game. Powerful pharaohs would hold mystical duels in other dimensions, just as we're doing now. But instead of cards, they battled with real monsters and real magic. The magical forces were so powerful that the Egyptians lost control of them and nearly destroyed the entire world. It's a good story, but these monsters can't be real. These monsters are very real, and also quite dangerous. Yugi boy, you really are quite entertaining. The way you scowl and sneer, so defiant and yet helpless and so completely ignorant of the power of your Millennium Prozel. That's the, um, like, the yellow pyramid you have. It's uh, one of the seven Millennium items. Really, if I had to explain the story, like, during this Let's Play, that would be complicated. So I suggest you, you I, I highly suggest you watch the show for yourself. It's a good show. They, like, they very much just, like, spark notes this. You know, it's very brief, or whatever. So he, Yugi looked at the puzzle, the power of my puzzle. 5,000 years ago, a powerful pharaoh locked the magic of the shadow games away in seven mystical millennium items, like I just said. So yeah, you got the puzzle, the eye on the top, the ring on the bottom, top left is the necklace, top right is scales, bottom left is the rod, and then bottom right is key. So yeah, those are seven. Seven items. You're saying that my puzzle is one of them? Yes, and they're, they are quite Mystical energies locked within them. Magic that could change your life forever if only you knew how to unleash it. As the two dueled, it seemed that Pegasus knew every move Yugi was going to make before he did it. Despite this disadvantage, Yugi mustered all his skills and nearly won, but Yugi ran out of time when the time limit passed. So yeah, he in the show he was just about to win and then the time limit hit because like it was a videotape, so you know, there's only a limited space on the tape, so the duel could only last fifteen minutes. I have taken the measure of your talents this day, Yugi Moto. And when we do next, we shall play for far higher stakes. I'm done with your games. <clears throat> tis, tis, tis. You presume I'm giving you a choice in the matter, but I'm not. For I also possess one of the seven Millennium Elms, the all-powerful Millennium Eye. Millennium Eye? That's right. Okay, so yeah, that's his, like, eye hidden by his hair. He hides it, so. But yeah, he has a Millennium on him as well. That's right, Yugi Boy. I'll show you the true extent of its magic. I have found that given the proper incentive, it's incentive, not incentive, anyone can be made to play my game. The power of the moon and I lashed out and stole Grandpa's soul. Yugi can only watch in horror. And so yeah, we lost our Grandpa's soul. So we gotta go and duel him again for it. And this is when we go to the uh, Duelist Kingdom tournament. Each duelist was given two star chips, which they could rager against other duelists on the island. And whoever earned 10 starships was granted entry into the tournament finals where they would compete for the $3 million grand prize and the chance to duel Pegasus himself. 
For his first duel, Yugi faced off against the conniving Weevil Underwood, a duelist with whom he had a bit of history. While riding the boat to Duelist Kingdom, Weevil took Yugi's precious Exodia cards and threw them into the ocean. And so yeah, that's how he lost Exodia. And it kind of makes sense in the show, because if Yugi had Exodia for the entire Duelist Kingdom, so that it would just be over in five seconds, you know? So, gotta make it, gotta build suspense somehow. So, losing your most powerful set of cards, you know, that's, that's a good way to do it. So when Yugi spied Weevil on the island, he chased after him into the woods. Welcome, said the spider to the fly. You flew right into my trap. It's time you answered for destroying my Exodia cards, Weevil. Can't you let bygones be bygones? Weevil, it's time to find out if you're as good as du a dueling as you are running away. Was I simply running away or probably weaving you into my web? It's time to duel. Alright, one thing that um, is not properly done for season one in this game is that uh, I'm gonna go with scissors nope I lost anyway uh, in the show basically on duels uh, the duels kingdom tournament um, the different arenas they're dueling would have like different field effects and that would boost certain cards attack and defense points whereas here it's just normal so except he played forest immediately so yeah he did that So let's see here, we got uh, polymerization off the bat, so we can create a uh, fusion monster, and with both Curse of Dragon and Gaia the Fierce Knight, we will make Gaia the Dragon Champion, so that's a great start, right there. And that's another achievement. You get, this is actually a pretty easy game when it comes to achievements, so that's good. And putting him in attack mode. We will also activate Graceful Charity. Draw three cards and then get rid of two. Uh, get rid of Feral Imp and get rid of him. We'll play Mystical Elf in defense mode, and then we'll attack with Guy the Dragon Champion. And that was his Cocoon of Evolution, which is his best card. Basically, he would use uh, a different card to equip it, and then it would grow into his most powerful monster. So good thing we stopped that immediately. Okay, yeah, we want another monster to attack the face down one so we can keep our... Okay, uh, destroy all field spell cards on the field, inflict 500 damage of life points to each player's life points during... Hmm. That might be useful for later. And we're just going to attack. Yep, that was the Petite Moth he was going to use to create his uh, Great Moth, which is his greatest card. So. so I guess while we're doing dueling this one, um, just I don't know, we'll talk about, uh, basically, like, last time I, oh, wow, so it was a really like, good card. Uh, basically, I talked about, like, last time the, uh, um, activate my thing. So, yeah, you can see it's, like, separated. He gets his forest, I get my wasteland. And since I can't attack, I'll just end my turn. Basically, I talked about, because, like, last time I talked about my job over the summer, and so this time I'll just kind of, like, talk about whatever happened after that. So, yeah, I started college up again. Uh, I'm going to uh, Robert Morris University this time. Got another one of these. Hmm. Play this face down and end my turn there. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm liking it so far. Um, reason I left the uh, other place I was at last year is because they, they just didn't have my... Um, shouldn't have played that actually because it has good effect. But basically, they didn't have the major I was looking for. Like, I want to do, like, computer science-y stuff. And basically, they didn't have that. So, you know, I just kind of had to leave because of that. And now I'm here. And they have software engineering here, so that's good. I can do what I want now. So, it's great. Uh, and also, this time, I'm living in the dorms. Uh, well, for the last two years, I, ha I was actually living off campus. And I don't know. I don't really recommend it just just cuz 
Spells of Bounding Circle, that's a good card. First, we are going to just attack with our Dragon Champion to his Hercules Beetle. But yeah, so far I'm, I'm kind of enjoying living on campus. It's not too bad. Okay, another little annoying aspect of this game is that um, because of the nature of the game itself, they have to ask every five seconds, do you want to use this card that you can only activate in certain occasions? And so it's like Spellbinding Circle, I played down, but it's like, do you want to activate it? No, not yet. It's the, it's the f before the end of the main phase. Do you want to use it? No. He just ended his phase. You, do you want to do it? No. So you gotta ask. Oh, it's gotta ask over and over again, and that's just how it is. No, I don't want to use it. All right, let's let's play Rude Kaiser. We're gonna sacrifice our mystical elf. Don't really need that. Need to clear out some of these monsters, so we'll start doing that. But yeah, so far I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's not too bad. I'm gonna attack the leftmost one. Oh, he had another cocoon of evolution. Take the rightmost one. Alright, this is going good. But yeah, um, so yeah, living on campus, it seems fun. Uh, as for like anything like activities wise, I'm going out for the bowling team, see if that works out. And besides that, nothing much going on, just playing, just doing a new let's play for you guys. So yeah, let's get, I guess nothing else to talk about, let's just do it. Okay, so he's got terraforming, where you add a few to hand, that's no big deal. He already has one equipped anyway, so. And then he's got, oh no, not Man Eater Bug. Oh, that's a good card. Uh, there's nothing I can do to stop it. Uh, can this stop it? No, it's gonna still do its effect, so I can't, I can't do anything to stop it. Man, Man Eater Bug is a really good card. Man. Summon Sangin in attack mode just because I can destroy Man Eater Bug pretty easily with him. And then if he gets destroyed, I can like bring back a card later. So. There you go, he took some damage. And Rue Kaiser, you're gonna attack his face down. Oh, it's a cocoon of evolution, darn. That's not good, because he can grow his uh, great moth and that if he gets a teat moth equipped to it. A lot of this game is luck based though, like depending on what cards you get. Hmm, should I use it now? No, I'll take the hit. I'll just save this uh, lightning circle for when like he uses something much more powerful. Uh, I'll take giant soldier stone though. Yeah, because if he summons that great moth, the um, the trap I have would be very helpful in that. Okay, so it's revealing light. That's also a good card. Giant Soldier of Stone Defense. And then we'll play Swords of Revealing Light face down. Yeah, Spellbinding Circle. Um, see, this destroys mine as well. So I'll save that for. Oh, wait. I could have attacked. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I could have attacked. Oh, well. Well, I mean, he's gonna do damage to himself because he's attacking my giant soldier stone, so that's good then. We're all good. 
Alright, what else do I got? We got a... Ooh, a Horn of the Unicorn. Equip... So, yeah, equip this. And I can... Yeah, I'll... I'll equip this to my Rude Kaiser. And now it's even more powerful. Oh, man, I could have actually flipped up Giant Soldier's Stone and destroyed that thing. Hmm. Oh, well. Um, we'll just attack this for now. I know the Cocoon is probably higher um, priority, but I just want to do some damage. So there we go, 1,300 points of damage. That's great. And we'll end our turn there. Another possibility is he could deck himself, because when you run out of cards to draw, then you end up losing the duel automatically. So, he could do that, because he already played two graceful charities. He's got a face down card, so that's not help, helping me. Alright, we'll, we'll play this in defensive mode. And then we'll attack with Rude Kaiser. To destroy the cocoon of evolution. Wabaku. Alright, so he's not gonna. No, I'm not gonna chain another card. Uh, no, I'm not gonna activate. Not gonna activate. Okay, so yeah, that just basically negates the attack, so we're gonna move on. Let's keep going. Saving that card for Great Moth if he ever summons it. I don't know if he will. Nope, he ended his turn. Alright, uh, I want to summon my Gaia the Fierce Knight, but at the same time, I want to keep Giant Soldier's Stone as a defensive wall, so I think I will temporarily summon him, temporarily summon him in attack mode, just so that way I can get. Yes, yeah, so, because see, he gets like a little bit of a boost, so I don't think any of his insect cards could really beat it. And if they, if any, if anything, like if he does beat it, then I can use Rude Kaiser instead. So there we go. Cocoon of Evolution is destroyed, and Griffor attacking him directly. There we go. He's on the ropes. I'd say about one or two more turns ought to do it. Plays a card face down. Alright. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to activate Burning Land and then play this again after it. Just so that way I can inflict even more damage on him. I think that would be a good idea. So that way he doesn't get boosts, but I do. Even though he could, he's gonna play it again anyway, because he did put that in his hand. So, all right, and then after that, so what's revealing? All like also like flip that up. If I know what it is, I can go for like a full frontal attack on him and win. But no, it's best to play it safe. So I'm just gonna summon. My guy, the Fierce Knight, and use him and. Yeah, if I use Guy the Fierce Knight. on. the face down, and then I use Rude Kaiser on, the fa on his life points, he'll basically be almost gone. Oh. Never mind what just happened. Hold on, gotta read the effect of that. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one insect type monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck. Alright, so that's what he did. Well, that's good then, because like, it's from the deck, so it's like he has less cards to now use, so that's good.
And with that, I end my turn. He only has 15 cards left, whereas I have 18. So, I mean, he's run low on cards. And he's going to take um, some continuous uh, damage from my card. But I also take a little bit of damage as well. But that's okay, because I'm way ahead of him. So we're going to summon Beaver Warrior in attack mode. And let's just end the duel. Attack with Beaver Warrior. I think that... Could be a negate attack. Nope, Wabaku. Ah, uh, no battle damage this turn. I don't. Yeah, I can still direct attack him, but it's not going to do anything. Man. So we're going to just end our turn there. All right, one more turn ought to do it. He he's, he's got no tricks up his sleeve anymore, I and mean, he's still losing anyway. Like I could just like wait this out, and he could still lose because of my burning land card. I could put two down. Just really... Oh, good mirror force. This duel's over, basically. Like, with mirror force. Play that down just in case. I need it. Uh... Might as well use Spellbinding Circle now. And... He's on his face down. Oh, I thought that would flip it up. Weird. Alright, so it's a feeling with light. Whatever. What do we got? This card. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one level 5 or higher insect type monster from your deck to your hand. If this card is banished, you can send one instant type monster from your deck to the graveyard, except romance insect. Okay, so yeah, this duel's over. Woo! I did it. Beaver Warrior, you finished him. And then. Yep, got it. He's got a card, but that doesn't matter, because I can attack with Gaia the First Knight, and the duel's over. Woo! We won. It's over. I've won. No! Impossible! My moth is unbeatable. You couldn't even summon your moth. That's how unbeatable, quote-unquote, it was. I, I prevented you from summoning it. And so, yeah, there we go. And so that's all for this time. Next time, we're going to be doing the next duel titled The Harpy Lady. See you guys then.